Jingoism is an ideology slash foreign policy that provides an extreme spin on the ideas of nationalism. Nationalism itself is the idea that by creating and adhering to a national identity, a country can experience internal stability. Jingoism takes these preachings and turns them up to 11. A nation under Jingoism now views itself as superior to all others to such an extent that all citizens must show a blind allegiance to the country, and the existence of any other nation is an insult. Foreign relations now consist of either threats or force. One way to visualize the ideological position of Jingoism is through this graph. As we can see here, Jingoism is more or less the same as ultranationalism, and sits ahead of nationalism, which itself sits ahead of patriotism. The only ideology more nationalist than Jingoism is imperialism, which substitutes international aggression with subjugation. While Jingoism does not inherently affect internal governance, we can assume that there is a strong authority to keep citizens in line with patriotic values, along with a centralised yet ubiquitous government that the citizens can fondly look towards. The timeline proceeds. The porcelain people make their switch to jingoism, and some societal changes ensue. The former merchants now make up an obscure ruling class, similar to an oligarchy, and shift their focus from the economy to nationalism. To ensure the utmost patriotism from all citizens across the nation, the intercolonial messenger system is updated slightly, with messages now regularly delivering government news and propaganda to their destinations. There is still uncertainty as to how the colonies will be run, so the rulers decide to do a bit of improvisation, assigning a specific sector for each colony to focus on. This is done in order to prioritise a new, important aspect of their nation, the military. If the porcelain people are to display their belligerence to the copper territory, they need the force to back it up, and military training immediately begins for hundreds of able-bodied citizens. On the international front, the porcelain people make it clear that they are not to be messed with, to which the copper fields people reply, Okay. The rulers, ever so trigger-happy, see this comment as a call to arms and prepare for war, only to realise how underdeveloped their weapons are. With a few monetary incentives, they create some new roles in their society, with specialists now working around the clock to develop new military technology. As for the issues of inequality amongst the colonies, the rulers employ the age-old method of telling them that nothing is wrong. For the most part, this works, and the rulers promptly resume managing resources and playing the defensive game. This continues for a few decades, as the rulers continue to wait until the porcelain people have the clear upper hand over the copper fields people. Various advances occur over this period as well, as the specialists experiment with leather armour, shields, and even begin using stone bricks as a stronger building material. With these developments, the rulers deem it time to strike and begin assembling forces for an invasion of the copper territory. Just then, a messenger arrives from the seaside colony with important news. An entirely new people have arrived on their shores and wish to trade. Now, under mercantilism a few decades ago, the porcelain people would have been more than happy to trade with them. But under their new system, these strange people are foreign, and foreigners are bad. The porcelain people proudly tell these new traders to bugger off and march their army up to the seaside colony to chase them out with spears and arrows. They are certain that this reaction will have no negative consequences in the future. Unfortunately, the delay brought about by the sudden diversion means that the copper reconnaissance has had time to report the imminent invasion back to their headquarters. As the porcelain army marches into the copper fields territory, they are met with immediate resistance from an army just as large. It begins. The front lines are met with a sea of arrows, raining down from towering walls, but the porcelain forces have the upper hand due to their shields. Combat is bloody and disorganised, with hundreds of casualties on both sides. Before long, the copper defences break apart as the porcelain army moves inwards. Land is claimed, villages are enslaved, and towns are pillaged, while the copper army continues to retreat and regroup. But by a certain point, the porcelain forces can go no further. They are too exhausted, too low in soldiers, and far from home. With all this new land annexed, they decide to call it quits for now and ask the remaining Copperfields people for a truce. The Copperfields people, after centuries of putting up with the porcelain people's tomfoolery, have had enough, and retaliate, chasing the porcelain army all the way back home. The porcelain people reflect. They have lost soldiers, resources, and money, all for no territory gain whatsoever. With lessons somewhat learnt, the porcelain nation returns to a secluded life, deciding instead to be protectionist over their own matters for the remaining decades. These years are uneventful, and mostly consist of rebuilding, growing, and quelling rebellions. Not to say that no milestones were achieved, as by the ninth decade, the stone miners in the hillside colonies had discovered a sturdy, meltable substance, iron. And there is little else to note. The porcelain people have been tending their wounds for the last few decades, and their ideological centennial arrives again. 
While the population is patriotic, they have grown tired of jingoism and are ready for a new ideology to guide themselves by. The clergy returns to the sacred temple once more to access the realm of the YouTube comment section. There, various souls can choose an ideology for the porcelain people to follow, and the submission with the most likes will be used for the next 100 years, greatly affecting the lives of the porcelain people. So what ideology shall the porcelain people follow next? You decide. <laughs>